Uh, I work for the World Bank. No, I don't, actually. No, I work for the Red Cross. And uh, I, uh, I work a lot with HOT, um, very closely with HOT, and HOT are our good friends. Hopefully this will work. Um, uh, I get a lot of times, I get questions about from companies uh, that do missing maps work. A lot of times people will come up to us and be like, hey, so we map some buildings, but why? Isn't there a machine that does that better? Um, can't we do roads a little bit better? What, where does all that hot data go, right? And we all see the listserv stuff about what hot does and what hot doesn't do, um, and the value of that. So what I'm gonna talk to you about is where all this stuff goes. So first, some numbers, some perspective. This was yesterday, like during, during, uh, during the talks. There were 119 people on the tasking manager at the time. Um, and if you look down there again, you can see 1.6 million tasks, so that's each individual little square. And there are 138,000 people that have ever registered on the tasking manager to map. This is a huge cohort of OSM, right? This is 1% of all active mappers within, or 10% of all active mappers within OSM. So it's a huge, huge number of people, and it's a huge resource that we have as the World Bank or Red Cross or whoever to do our mapping. So where does this data go, right? The data really goes on airplanes for us. We get the data, and then we put it on airplanes. And a lot of times that looks like this. Um, so this is Hurricane Matthew um, a couple years ago when it hit Haiti. Um, and it hit a part of Haiti that had not really been mapped. Haiti had been well mapped in 2010 for around the Port-au-Prince area, but not this particular sort of part of Haiti. Um, and if you think about Haiti, it kind of looks like a, like a crab claw kind of thing. Um, and one of the, the lower sort of pieces of that hadn't been mapped. And our teams asked us for a, for a map so they could get around. Um, and we thought, you know, what's better than a, a map? Well, you know, an eight foot long map. Um, so we made, using the hot data that was being made and refreshed by all the volunteers, we made an eight foot long map that is, was on our EOC walls, both in DC and down in Haiti. And that's what we used to do all of our planning for all the relief that we provided, um, both in coordination with USAID and other, and other groups down there in Haiti. So Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Um, and I think this may have been one of the big, largest building efforts, Russ, yeah, um, that we've asked HOT to do. Um, we said, HOT, can you map all the buildings in Puerto Rico? Um, and while you're at it, also clean up all the tagger. Um, and HOT did that, and they were doing that. This map I made with the existing OSM data two days uh, into the storm, uh, or after the storm. And again, huge wall maps are really great for relief planning. So whenever we go anywhere, we put, we put big maps on, on planes. Um, and these maps, there's not shown here, but every day, 10, 20 people at a time would gather around them and plan where they're gonna go next. Is this road passable? And they end up with like all these little X's on them or highlighter on them where we were identifying how we could get our, our help out to folks. Um, and this really came into effect when we started to do something um, for the first time. We wanted to be able to connect families. Um, in uh, Puerto Rico, there was no cell phone coverage at the time, it basically just all dropped out. Um, and so people were going days um, without letting their loved ones know um, in other parts of the world that they were safe. Um, and that's part of the core mission of the Red Cross is connecting families. Um, and so we had, we have these things called VSATs, which are just really fancy cell phones basically for satellite internet um, that allow us to um, have a really, really good um, signal. And we thought, you know, why don't we just put it on the back of a truck um, and we'll drive that to different places in Puerto Rico. Um, to identify the coverage. Um, so here you're seeing a map that we made like five days into this process um, where our teams had come back from the field and they had said, you know, nobody came and connected to our, our VSAT today because they'd gone to a place with some connectivity here in blue. Um, and the areas in, in black there are no, no cell connectivity at all. Um, and so using that data that we were getting from Facebook um, through a partnership with them and the OSM data that was allowing us to understand where um, tight villages are and um, squares and, and kind of banks and that kind of information. Um, we were able to cite and tell people exactly where to go and how to get there using OSM data. Um, as you can see here, the picture on the left, this woman crying, she was talking to her son who she hadn't talked to for six days after the storm and her son was like literally gonna get on a plane and go find his mom um, because she thought, uh, he thought that she was in danger. Um, we also use this data most recently in the Sulawesi um, earthquake and tsunami that happened. Um, so here you're seeing on the left, Sidney Morton, who's a colleague of mine, was in uh, Lombok um, for the earthquake that happened there. And you can see one of our colleagues from the Indonesian Red Cross um, with his trusty missing map sticker. 
and uh, in QGIS using the OSM data in the field to respond to the Lombok earthquake. And on the right, you can see a map that we made for the earthquake that combines data from, uh, from the Copernicus folks and then overlays that with the, the building data that OSM um, and HOT was making. And, and that data itself is fantastic because in the early days, the Sentinel data or the Copernicus data would just be a bunch of dots and didn't make any sense. And now that everyone in the humanitarian community is standardizing on OSM, those dots pretty much are one-to-one -one for buildings. It's kind of amazing and allows, it makes our job a lot easier. And you can see one thing to point out here is this little, uh, this little guy right here. Um, that's actually a landslide. So it didn't get hit by the tsunami, but it's a really massive landslide. And so we're able to te detect that out and then identify the sort of the, uh, in this map as well as like the banks and some other critical infrastructure for our teams to get to. Uh, another big project that we did with HOT, um, and this is a combination of a lot of other NGOs as well, um, was trying to map the Cox Bazar refugee um, sort of camp uh, for the Rohingya in Bangladesh. And this is a combination of HOT and MSF and IOM and UNHCR and a bunch of different actors that all have a really good interest in, um, a really strong interest in having a better map here. So here you can see, it's kind of hard to tell here, but there's basically a big change. And it's happening so fast that IOM is flying new drone imagery every, every few weeks. Um, and that imagery has been updating um, and hot volunteers have been adding to that. And that's allowed us to really plan for right now, the monsoon season, um, to give them evacuation routes and understand what's gonna happen um, when those storms inevitably hit. Um, one last uh, story here is from a couple years ago when we mapped uh, over one million buildings in Malawi to help with our measles campaigns. Um, and this was, um, this was a huge, huge effort um, to sort of map a large portion of Malawi to understand where people lived so that we could go and vaccinate them. This eventually led to helping out a campaign that vaccinated, I think it was six million kids in four days. Um, and that's a, that's a huge logistical nightmare. Um, and this sort of, this data led to helping with that. And you can see my former colleague, Emily, um, directing folks where to go to do um, surveys using OSM data as the base map. Go here, look at this place, ask 10 kids if they've gotten their shot. If uh, nine of them have said that they, if eight of them did not get a shot, then we need, need to do a follow-up survey because you have to get 95% of all kids to reach that herd immunity. So get your kids vaccinated. Um, most recently, we've been working with uh, Ebola in, BR, in DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And here, it's just very basic, right? This is like, OSM map tiles with like a border around it and then we pulled out the hospitals. Like this, um, this map goes so, it's so simplistic, but it goes so far to uh, helping our folks in the field who have no idea how to get from hospital to hospital or have no idea what the next village across is. Um, so all this data goes a long, long way. Um, so all that's to say, one, thank you for mapping and two, keep mapping. There will always be uh, some place in the world that is vulnerable or just suffered a disaster. So thank you.